Well, we are in a um, shelter wood. We're in a shelter wood with reserve treatment. That's a two age treatment. And the way this particular treatment was implemented was we decided to leave about 20 to 30 square feet per acre of basal area. Our leave trees that we chose to leave, our number one uh, priority was that they were mass producing trees, um, either oak or hickory. And the reason we chose that is because we kind of want to lifeboat this stand a little bit through. So we want to have residual trees out here that are producing mass, uh, producing potential reproduction in case we need it in the future. And also that's a great wildlife benefit is to have hard mass species on site. So we left, tried to leave about 20 to 30 square feet per basal area. Um, one of the concerns with the shelter wood with reserve treatment is that you're leaving some overwood um, that can uh, be a risk into the future. So they can be especially prone to uh, windfall during storm events, which we definitely saw some of that during um, 2016. Um, uh, we saw some, you know, pretty major storms come through and some of these residual trees fell. Um, so you're, you're, you're taking a risk leaving some residual overstory trees. However, you are offering um, some heterogeneity in the structure of the stand, which of course is publicly appealing if you have visual quality um, objectives in your, in your stand that you're trying to meet. Um, the public likes uh, to have some residual overstory to look at as opposed to a silviculture clear cut. Um, that's a big opening. Um, they tend to prefer that. Um, this is vastly different than the expanding gap treatment that we were in a minute ago. The expanding gap treatment, um, much smaller area was disturbed um, on a per acre basis, um, at least at the beginning of, of the uh, of beginning of this study. Um, and we created, you know, very small um, half acre size gaps over there versus an entire stand, which these stands are roughly five to eight acres in size. The entire stand was treated with a uh, shelter wood with reserve treatment. Um, and again, we left predominantly oak uh, and hickory species in the overstory. Um, and uh, what we were hoping to get is a response from the regeneration layer, which we knew we would see. We knew that we would get um, an immediate flux of the regeneration responding to the increase in light, the increase in moisture availability because the overstory trees are now gone. Um, and we also planted within this stand and, and providing that immediate influx of advanced regeneration of oak, increasing the stocking of oak regeneration on the site. So we were looking at both natural regeneration and artificial regeneration in these uh, shelter wood with reserve stands and comparing them to the um, expanding gap treatment. So I'll show you here uh, is one of the trees we planted. And you, as you can see, it's responded quite well um, in this treatment. And when you compare this treatment to the expanding gap treatment, the oaks that we planted and natural regeneration um, of oak responded better in these shelter wood with reserve treatments. Uh, we have on average about 400 trees per acre that we consider competitive of oak. And that includes uh, the trees we planted in the shelter wood with reserve treatment compared to only about 80 trees per acre over in the expanding gap treatment centers. Um, so I think uh, when you're looking at the efficiency and the efficacy of these treatments, the shelter wood with reserve was definitely better um, in regenerating oak and providing advanced regeneration on site that we can then manage later on. And so here's one of the oaks we planted. And if you come up here, you can see there's some natural oak as well. Here's a, um, a native oak, not quite as big as the one we planted. Um, and then we've got another native, nice uh, white oak, Corksalva here. This is not one we planted. This is a native, a natural regenerating oak right next to one that we did plant. Um, and so this one is a little bit smaller in this case uh, compared to the natural oak. But this right here, this, this natural oak, uh, regeneration is exactly what we're looking for in terms of um, trying to regenerate oak uh, using different civil cultural treatments. This is exactly the kind in the size and the form that we're aiming for in terms of getting oak recruited into the next uh, stand that is going to occupy the site into the future. And if, if you keep going and look around, there's a lots of other species that have come in and are going to join the oak and um, occupying the space, the growing space on this site. There's a lot of diversity 
Um, we tallied about 25 tree species on this site. Um, and, uh, you know, so this will be a diverse site. And again, we're not looking to completely, you know, turn this site 100% to oak. What we want is to enrich the site with oak to maintain some of the oak component that was here prior to disturbance, which about 70% of the trees were oak. I don't think we're gonna get 70% of our trees in the next stand to be oak, but at least we'll be, we will hopefully be able to maintain some oak component um, here on this site and provide all the important ecological benefits of oak, such as hard mass, but also the timber values, um, particularly white oak is an important timber species. There's a big strong stave market uh, for whiskey production and they have to use white oak um, for that. And so we hope to keep white oak in the system and provide those benefits into the future. So the Shelterwood with Reserve treatment where I'm standing here was definitely the most effective treatment in terms of the oak regeneration response compared to the expanding gap treatment. And maybe part of the reason for that is because with the expanding gap treatment, right now anyway, we only have the one gap that's been established in, in each of the stands. And it's a very, um, it's, it's a half acre gap. And within that gap is a, is a, a you know, high intensity of light coming into that gap. And out here in the shelter wood treatment, there's a more heter heterogeneous light regime. So you've got these 20 to 30 square feet residual of basal area per acre, residual stems in the overstory, creating some level of shade on the ground and creating um, patches of, of open sun conditions, patches of shaded conditions, patches of kind of intermediate sun and shade conditions. And so there's this more heterogeneous response, which I think is really important for oak regeneration. I think that they require somewhat of an intermediate light regime where there's not so much light coming in that the poplar, which is what we saw in the gap, just takes over the entire site. Um, but there's enough light where the oaks can respond and can grow and can meet their photosynthetic demands for producing carbon and putting on growth and, and have some response. So I think that is per perhaps why we're seeing a better response in the shelterwood uh, with reserve treatment um, compared to the expanding gap treatment. One of the things about oak regeneration um, is that it's extremely variable um, and patchy in its response. So you'll have areas like where I'm standing where we have a lot of great oak regeneration that responded to this treatment in a very positive way and then go just a little ways up the hill and you don't see really a good response at all. Generally speaking, um, you know, you're gonna see a better oak response on your more dry or xeric sites compared to your more mesic sites. Um, so it's a lot easier to regenerate oak where you have um, you know, less water holding capacity, where your competition from species like poplar are, are less. Um, but of course the trick is, is to find those sites where you have an oak regeneration problem where you can manage to do something to improve it. That's the trick. Um, and that's something we really haven't totally figured out yet is where what are the site conditions that are best to be identified to manage for oak? And then what would be those management prescriptions, uh, you know, that would be the best thing for the oak regeneration response? And those are, that's exactly what we're trying to do in the study, but um, unfortunately we still have a lot more to learn about it and a lot more um, treatments to test than what we just did in this study. Um, but I think it's important to understand that um, it's not going to be a uniform response across the stand. It's going to be variable across the stand. And, uh, but generally speaking, where you have your drier sites, um, you're going to have the better response than compared to more, your more music site.
one of the things we uh, are testing in this particular study is the use of herbicides as a as a control measure to help uh, get the regeneration of oak in a more competitive position. Um, so we decided to use herbicide um, because that's a targeted approach. Um, you are specifically going to target non-desirable species um, versus using something like prescribed burning, which is a very coarse treatment. You're going to burn a stand. You're not necessarily um, you know going to get maybe the the results that you want because the burns are highly variable you burn some areas hotter than others other areas don't even burn at all and so with a targeted herbicide approach uh, we're really able to get in here and target um, you know high quality oak regeneration and get them to be more competitive over time at least that was the goal so what we did was at the beginning before we came in and did any harvesting we hack and squirted everything below six inches in diameter at breast height in order to reduce the um, ability of those species to sprout and be more competitive uh, with our oak species. And then again, we came in at year six and we released um, competitive oak seedlings that we saw. So it was very targeted. So we did not just come in and, and kill everything. We, we walked through transects through the stands and we found competitive oak seedlings and we released around them. And so here is a native oak here and here right next to it is a planted seedling here uh, that we planted and as you can see both of these are pretty competitive but behind it was a, um, a sprout clump of red maple that came up uh, you know so maybe that somehow survived the first herbicide treatment we did because red maple is notoriously uh, immune to some herbicides but we came in year six and we treated that uh, stump sprout of red maple in order to um, kill it and in order to free up this little patch of oak regeneration that you see in front of it. So we've got the planted oak here. You've got some nice native uh, white oak next to it along with some scarlet oak and, and some black oak down, down slope from it. Um, and so we think that, you know, hopefully our data will show that the use of the herbicide treatment was a benefit um, that was definitely efficient in terms of making the oak regeneration more competitive over time. And we will compare these results to the shelter wood stand just adjacent to us where we did not do any herbicide treatments and we'll be able to really determine uh, the effects that we had over time. In this uh, shelter wood with reserve treatment, we decided to leave about 20 to 30 square feet of basal area per acre of uh, overstory trees. And we selected trees that were going to be mass, produ mass producing trees. Um, and the reason we did that was because we want to provide um, a, an ecological benefit for wildlife that eat acorns and hickory nuts. Um, but we also wanted to kind of use those overstory trees to kind of lifeboat the system, so to speak. So in case something happens, um, to uh, the re reproduction that is currently on site in case we have some kind of other disturbances that we're not anticipating that reduces the reproduction that we have on site. At least we have these hard mass producing species that we're, that we're desiring producing acorns and providing um, input of regeneration over you know, decades. Um, we tried to select on, a, you know, we tried to really select the long lived species like white oak, but we also selected uh, the shorter lived species like this scarlet oak you see behind me and uh this is a shelter wood with reserve uh, stand meaning it's going to be a two-aged system so these overstory trees are not going to be harvested they're going to stay on site so eventually this will be a two-aged stand and because of that um some of these overstory trees uh you know did produce epicormic sprouts um, which is a um a defect um in terms of timber quality moving forward um and we did try to select, um, you know, co-dominant stems to leave. We tried not to select um, poor form trees or poorly, poorly formed trees, but we weren't always successful in that. Um, but, you know, again, these trees are going to be staying on site. We're not taking them out. So we tried not, we tried not to leave the absolute best quality trees out here, but we didn't want to degrade the quality of the stand either. Um, so 
what you see here is a scarlet oak and you can see up above there are a few epicormic branches uh coming up which will be um a degrade in the in the wood quality moving forward but um some of the other stems we left out here we didn't actually see that occurring um, as I mentioned earlier, one of the problems with leaving to, uh, or creating a two-age system is that you're leaving remnant trees out here that is going to be a risk moving forward into the future. So these trees could be impacted by things like storms or insect uh, predators or any kind of disease. And so you are taking a risk leaving them out here. Uh, but we feel like the benefit of leaving them and having that potential reproductive source, that potential hard mass component moving forward into the future was worth it. And so that's, and also providing that heterogeneous light regime that we think is good um, for oak regeneration. So that's why we decided to um, choose this particular treatment, the shelter wood with reserve treatment.